Just as the supermodels of the 1960s showed how times were changing, the cover girls of the 70s and 80s did the same. Each girl made her own mark on the industry, whether she broke down barriers or just shook things up. From Janice, the first supermodel Dickinson, to future Bond babe Grace Jones, let's take a look at the shocking changes of the 70s and 80s supermodels between then and now. Janice Dickinson Fans of America's Next Top Model know Janice Dickinson as the tough-as-nails judge. After winning Miss High Fashion Model in the early 70s, Janice moved to New York to pursue her modeling career. Even though this is a very debatable point, there's no denying her popularity in the 1980s. She walked the runways, starred in ad campaigns for Giorgio Armani, Valentino, and Oscar de la Renta and was on the cover of Harper's Bazaar more than once. Dickinson did all of this even though Eileen Ford, a modeling agent, told her she looked too, quote, exotic and, quote, ethnic, even though her ancestors were Polish and English. After she was rejected, photographer Jacques Silberstein found her. She went on to grace the covers of all of the best fashion magazines, including Marie Claire, and now calls herself, quote, the world's first supermodel. Inès de la Fresange It seemed like fate that Inès de la Fresange would become a fashion icon. Being born to an Argentine model mother and a French stockbroker father gave her a good start. When you add this to the fact that she was tall and thin, perfect for haute couture, Karl Lagerfeld from Chanel was bound to come knocking. The designer gave her an exclusive contract, making her the face of the famous brand. Since then, she has put her face on the Marianne bust, which is the national symbol of the French Republic. She has also written the book Parisian Chic, A Style Guide, made a line with Uniqlo, and agreed to be the Roger Vivier brand ambassador. Iman Peter Beard saw Iman on the street in Nairobi in 1975 and fell in love with her statuesque Somali beauty. At the time, she was in college studying political science and spoke five languages. During this time, the Somali-born model was one of the few black faces in high fashion, so designers and makeup artists didn't know how to work with her skin tone. She's used this experience to build Iman Cosmetics, a beauty empire. She also has been the inspiration for many designers over the years, especially Thierry Mugler and Yves Saint Laurent. She is an ambassador for many charitable groups and married David Bowie in 1992. Anna Baile Heralded as, quote, Asia's first supermodel, Anna Baile sashayed down the catwalks of Valentino, Christian Lacroix, and Oscar de la Renta, fronted the biggest campaigns and graced countless magazine covers, including international editions of Harper's Bazaar. This was a long cry from her days as a pre-med student at the University of the Philippines. After leaving her modeling career, she launched her own lipstick line and dabbled in journalism. She may be long gone from the fashion world, but her reputation as the first Asian to successfully model still inspires today. Jerry Hall Jerry Hall left her home in Texas when she was 16 because she wanted to be a famous model. She bought a one-way ticket to France and was discovered on a beach in Saint-Tropez. Helmut Newton started taking pictures of her a few weeks after she was found, and she ended up on the covers of 40 major fashion magazines. Jerry Hall started the trend of models dating rock stars. In the end, she married Mick Jagger. But before all of these relationships, she dominated the fashion industry. She walked every major runway, appeared in more glossy magazines than anyone else at the time, and demanded big paychecks. Hall may be a, quote, Southern belle, but her career shows that she was also in charge. Katusha Neon Before she started modeling, Katusha Neon had several challenges in life. Born in Guinea, she was sent away as a child had a female circumcision when she was just nine, and got married and had a child when she was just 17. Even though she was poor and had dark skin, Yves Saint Laurent and Paco Rabanne used her as inspiration. This shows how determined she was. 
She eventually moved to Paris and quit modeling in the 90s to focus on activism. Neon came back into the spotlight in 2005 when she started hosting France's Next Top Model. Elle McPherson Elle McPherson was Australia's answer to Christy Brinkley. She was the perfect example of the girl next door. In fact, she only started modeling in order to save money for law books at Sydney University. But with her fresh face and Amazonian body, it was clear that she wasn't cut out to be a lawyer. Time magazine even called her, quote, the body. During the 1980s, she was on the cover of a lot of magazines, including a record-setting five times on the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. In addition to being a supermodel and a mogul, McPherson is also a supermom to two sons. Christina Cordula Before Giselle Bunchton and Alessandra Ambrosio strutted down the runway, Christina Cordula was the original Brazilian beauty who ruled the fashion world. Cordula was already famous in her home country because she was in ads, but when she cut off her hair at a friend's suggestion, she became an international star. The top houses took notice of the look, and she was soon a regular at Chanel, Christian Dior, and Yves Saint Laurent shows. In 2002, Cordula opened her fashion consultancy, Christina Cordula, Agency de Relooking in Paris, where she now lives. Marpessa Henning Marpessa Henning didn't let being turned down by one of the best modeling agencies at the time, the Eileen Ford Agency, stop her from becoming a model. With help from the famous fashion illustrator Antonio Lopez, she met the top designers of the time, like Karl Lagerfeld and Azadine Alaya of Chanel. She was always in their runway shows, as well as those by Valentino, Christian Lacroix, Oscar de la Renta, and Kenzo. In the 1990s, she decided to become an interior designer and moved to Spain. Dalma Callado Dalma Callado was the inspiration for some of the best designers of the 1980s, like Christian Dior's Gianfranco Ferre and Valentino. Her career started when, at age 19, she left her home country of Brazil to try her luck in France. It seemed like luck was on her side. She walked the runways of Chanel, Givenchy, and Versace, appeared on many magazine covers, and was the face of successful ad campaigns for Yves Saint Laurent. After 30 years away from Brazil, Dalma decided to return to live in the countryside with her son, the fruit of her marriage to an Italian. Isabella Rossellini Isabella Rossellini has a face that was made for the screen. The Roman actress and model is, after all, the daughter of Oscar winner Ingrid Bergman and director Roberto Rossellini. Lancome, a fragrance and cosmetics company, saw that she looked like a movie star and gave her a 14-year contract. She also appeared on many magazine covers over the years. She also had a career in Hollywood. Rosalini was in well-known movies like Blue Velvet, Death Becomes Her, and Silver Linings Playbook. Lancome brought her back as the brand ambassador in 2018, 22 years after she was told she was too old at the age of 43. Brooke Shields Brooke Shields started modeling when she was just 11 months old. She was in a 1966 commercial for Ivory Soap. The New York native then used that experience to get roles in movies like Pretty Baby and Endless Love, where she played Lolita. The best example of this typecasting was in TV ads for Calvin Klein jeans. She eventually got rid of that image, went to Princeton University, and starred in a number of well-known television shows. Now, Shields is speaking up for what she and other middle-aged women need from the public, to be seen and to be valued. Carol Alt Carol Alt was the first flashy girl from Flushing. The Queen's native ruled the modeling world in the 1980s, getting contracts with CoverGirl, Givenchy, Haynes, Diet Pepsi, and even General Motors. She was also on the cover of many top magazines, including the highly coveted Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue and Harper's Bazaar. Later, she tried her hand at acting, appearing in a number of movies and TV shows. Margot Hemingway 
The statuesque granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway was the first supermodel to get a $1 million contract with Fabergé. Time magazine called Hemingway one of the, quote, new beauties in 1975. And at the height of her career, she was on the covers of Cosmopolitan, Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and Vogue. Hemingway was a regular at Studio 54. Eventually, she stopped modeling and had a brief film career. Farida Kelfa Farida Kelfa was 15 when she left her strict Muslim home for Paris. There, photographer Jean-Paul Gaud found her and introduced her to designer Azadeen Alaya. Over the course of a decade, Kelfa was one of Allah's muses. She walked his runway shows and appeared in magazine spreads wearing his sleek, sultry designs. She had the same relationship with both Jean-Paul Gaultier and Christian Lobotin. Kelfa has made documentaries, has been a brand ambassador for Scaparelli, and just recently walked the runway for Fendi. She is now a documentary filmmaker. Christy Brinkley Christy Brinkley was the perfect example of an uptown girl. She was in Billy Joel's music video of the same name, and she later married Joel. She was blonde and had blue eyes, which made her the perfect 80s pinup. Her many covers for the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue and her 25-year contract as the face of CoverGirl are proof of this. Back in 2019, Brinkley revealed in an interview the key to feeling good in a bikini, no matter the age. She's now 69. Lauren Hutton Lauren Hutton was raised in the Florida Everglades. She was a 12th generation Southerner. In her late teens, she worked at New York's Playboy Club and New Orleans' Al Hertz Jazz Club. She eventually met and impressed Diana Vreeland, who sent her to Richard Avedon. Between 1966 and 1975, she ended up on more than 25 magazine covers and started a career as an actress. In American Gigolo, she acted alongside Richard Gere. Gia Karangi it's a big deal when Angelina Jolie plays you in a movie about your life. Gia Karangi was famous for her beauty, and photographers like Richard Avedon, Arthur Elgort, and Francesco Scavulo loved the way she looked. They all took photos of her for the big magazine. But as the movie Gia shows, her life outside the photo studio was full of problems, including drug abuse and health problems caused by HIV-AIDS. Still, in her short but important career, Karangi broke new ground. She's known for being the first model to come out as LGBTQ+. On November 18, 1986, she died from complications related to AIDS. She was just 26 years old. Paulina Porizkova Paulina Porizkova's fashion industry dominance was solidified by a $6 million contract with Estee Lauder. That was the largest figure ever paid to a model at the time. But having been in countless picture covers and parading on every major designer catwalk, those zeros were well-deserved. From the covers of Harper's Bazaar to ad campaigns for Chanel, Christian Dior, and Revlon, Porizkova was hard to miss in the 1980s. At age 13, when Porizkova was living in Sweden, she let a friend who was just starting out as a makeup artist paint her for her portfolio. Soon, talent scouts saw the photos, and as she said in an Instagram post, quote, the rest is history. Now, she has entered acting and writing. Kim Alexis Kim Alexis was a favorite of photographer Richard Avedon, and he took many memorable pictures of her, from the covers of Harper's Bazaar to ads for Versace. She had the perfect 80s look, blonde hair, blue eyes, and tanned skin. This led to her signing a contract with Revlon, replacing 70s icon Lauren Hutton. After modeling, she started acting. Kelly M. Berg. Kelly M. Berg was a member of her high school's female drill team when she was spotted by a local photographer in Houston. She eventually moved to New York, where she signed with Elite Model Management. She then appeared on the covers of major fashion magazines, made multiple appearances in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, and booked campaigns with CoverGirl and Calvin Klein. Emberg's interest in gardening led to her current job as 
Kelly Emberg, the model gardener, where she dispenses advice and encourages people to grow their own organic vegetables. Kelly LeBrock. Before movies like The Woman in Red and Weird Science made Kelly LeBrock the fantasy girl, the perfect example of beauty, she was one of the most popular models of the 1980s. The English woman started her career in New York, where editors noticed her right away and put her on the covers of their magazines. Christian Dior also took notice and gave her a long-term contract. She is now an actress. Marissa Berenson The designer Yves Saint Laurent called Marissa Berenson, quote, the girl of the 70s. Since her grandmother was the famous designer Elsa Schiaparelli, fashion was in her blood. She started modeling at 16, and Diana Vreeland eventually took her under her wing. She worked with designers like YSL, Azadine Alaya, and Halston, as well as famous photographers like Richard Avedon, Helmut Newton, and Irving Penn. She started acting and won the National Board of Review Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role as Natalia Landauer in the 70s movie Cabaret. Patty Hansen in 1972, Patty Hansen was found working at her father's Staten Island hot dog stand. Patrick de Marchelet took her on her first trip to Paris when she was just starting out in the modeling world. Soon after, Richard Avedon took pictures of her for Revlon ads. She was a regular at Studio 54, where she met her future husband, Keith Richards, on the dance floor when she was just 23. Like most models at the time, she went straight into acting. Karen Bjornsson One of designer Halston's Halsonettes, Bjornsson's career has taken an interesting path. After meeting Halston a month after moving to New York from Cincinnati, she was made his muse for two years. She also walked the runway for Calvin Klein, Perry Ellis, Ralph Lauren, and Donna Karen, and she was on the covers of Newsweek and Cosmopolitan. After leaving the runway in 1989 to take care of her two daughters, Bjornsson returned to the runway at age 50. Beverly Johnson In the 1970s, Beverly Johnson paved the way for black models by breaking down many racial barriers. When she first tried to become a model, every agency she contacted turned her down. But when things started to change culturally, her phone started ringing off the hook. She was in over 500 magazines and walked the runway for designers like Yves Saint Laurent, Ralph Lauren, and many others. She stopped modeling, but in 2022, at age 69, Beverly returned to her modeling roots at New York Fashion Week. Rene Russo In 1972, Rene Russo was found at a Rolling Stones concert and signed to Ford Modeling Agency. From there, her career took off. With her sharp cheekbones and wide eyes, the fashion world fell in love with her. Brooke Shields once called her, quote, the most beautiful thing that has ever walked the face of the earth. After a successful decade as a model, she stopped modeling when she was 30 and went on to have a successful career as an actress. Karen Graham Graham is her own legend. She was the first model to have an exclusive contract with Estee Lauder from 1970 to 1985. She was a muse for photographers Irving Penn, Richard Avedon, and Vogue editor Diana Vreeland, and she was on the cover of Vogue 20 times between 1970 and 1975. She quit modeling when she turned 40 in 1985 to pursue a career in fly fishing. She went back to modeling briefly for Estee Lauder in 1999, but it looks like fly fishing is now where her heart is. Dale Haddon Haddon is a legend in every way. In her 35-year career, she is the only model to have worked for Max Factor, Revlon, Estee Lauder, and L'Oreal. Haddon was a former beauty queen who was on the cover of Sports Illustrated's swimsuit issue in 1973 and was named twice to Harper's Bazaar's list of the 10 most beautiful women. She is known now for promoting L'Oreal's anti-aging products. She also wrote Ageless Beauty, A Woman's Guide to Lifelong Beauty and Wellness. Naomi Campbell Naomi Elaine Campbell was discovered at age 15. 
She is a fashion icon and has become one of the most famous and in-demand models, especially in the late 1980s and early 1990s. She has been on the cover of more than 500 magazines and been in ad campaigns for Burberry, Prada, Versace, Chanel, Dolce & Gabbana, Marc Jacobs, Louis Vuitton, E. Saint Laurent, and Valentino. She was also the first black model to appear on the cover of Time, French Vogue, Russian Vogue, and British Vogue. She is still modeling today. Grace Jones in 1970, Jones traveled to Paris, where her modeling career took off. Parisian fashion houses lived for Jones's androgynous and mysteriously bold appearance. She was featured on Elle, Vogue, and Stern covers, and walked for Yves Saint Laurent, Claude Montana, and Kenzo Takata. She lived with Jerry Hall and Jessica Lange in Paris and modeled for Azadine Alaya. She released 10 songs and acted in a James Bond film after modeling. In December 2016, Billboard magazine ranked her as the 40th most successful dance artist of all time. A few decades may have already passed, but one thing's for sure. These models still look amazing to this day. They have never lost the model aura. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.